Good morning, church. Uh, let's get ready to worship. Um, it's been a while since I led, and so I'm a little bit rusty, so bear with me. Um, yeah, but let's get started. God, thank you for this time. Um, thank you that we have a space to worship. Thank you that we can lay our burdens at your feet. Thank you that we can um, you know, find peace in your spirit, Lord. Let your spirit um, come down on this place and then each and every one's homes, Lord God. And so uh, thank you, Lord. And I pray all these things in your name. Amen. Cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on the cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears They laid him down in Joseph's tomb The entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord, Lord our God. Calvary Jesus bled died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my savior on the cursed tree His body bound and drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone. Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. Trample death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the King. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name. Forevermore, for endless days, we will sing your praise, O oh Lord, Lord our God. Oh, 
praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore, for endless days we will sing Your praise, O oh Lord, Lord our God. O oh Lord, Lord our God. O oh Lord, Lord our God. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. When all creation I sing Praise to the King of Kings You are my everything And I will adore you the Lamb who was slain, and holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. And holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Lightning, rose of thunder, blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. And holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. Dark. 
darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living. fathom such boundless grace the God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken I am forgiven the king of kings has called me his own beautiful savior i'm yours forever jesus christ my living hope hallelujah praise the one who set me free Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me Jesus yours is the victory Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. And hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. And hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, a living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Um, God, thank you for this time of worship. I pray that um, everyone had a blessed time. Thank you. Amen. Good morning, Full Life family. Thank you so much for joining us. Big thank you for the powerful time of worship. Before I hand it off to Pastor Daniel, I just want to share a few announcements with you. If you're looking for some information regarding the COVID-19 vaccine, look no further than your weekly email update. There you'll find a hyperlink that you can follow, and that just shares the availability of the vaccine in your area. Regarding your 2020 contribution statement, those will be mailed out in a few weeks. A digital copy will be sent to those who have an email address with us, and a hard copy will be sent by U.S. mail to those who do not. If you have any questions or comments, please contact our treasurer, Regina Song. Church, as we continue to celebrate and honor the life of our dear sister, Jeannie D., we have an update and announcement from her family. Until we are able to have an in-person celebration of life service, 
we have created a place online where people can share their thoughts, memories, and favorite photos of mom. In our weekly email up, uh, update, you will find a hyperlink that you can click on, click on where you can share some of your favorite memories, thoughts, and photos of Jeannie. Please feel free to pass this link on to anyone who would also like to contribute. With that said, I want to hand it over to Pastor Daniel, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Good morning, church. Once again, we are so glad that you are here joining us for this uh, special uh, for this Sunday meeting. We want to praise the Lord for His goodness and faithfulness. And before that, we would like to have a word of prayer to start off the meeting this morning. Oh, gracious God, we, we are so blessed because of your presence here. Our hearts are posture to worship you and to honor you and to give you glory in whatever things that we do. We ask for your divine blessing this morning to come upon the preacher and also the hearers. That we shall be all together so blessed, all because of you. We praise you, we bless you, we give all glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And this morning, I would like to share a word to you from the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 4, verse 9 and verse 10. I read from the New King James Version, and verse 9 tells us, And now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. It's a beautiful two verses and I entitled my message this morning, Make Me a Blessing. And this basically, Jabez was praying in the latter part of verse 10, that I may not cause pain. In other words, God, make my life a blessing to others. There are three things that i like to bring about in these two verses. Number one, Jabez, a painful beginning. Secondly, a prayerful heart. And thirdly, um, promising ending. The third part of my message is called A Promising Ending. I'd like to begin with Jabez, a painful beginning. And this is how the scripture describes about the life of Jabez that when he was born, his mother gave him a name. His mother gave him the name called Jabez, simply means I bore him in pain. In my New King James version, it mentioned that literally his name simply means he will cause pain. That's the literal interpretation of the word Jabez. But that was the really a painful beginning of Jabez. Something that is not his own doing. He was just brought forth into the world. And his mother called him, hey, you were really a pain in the neck. For various reasons, you know, that was not told to us. And the mother said that 
I bore you in pain. It could be a series of misfortunes that the family, you know, uh, confronted. Or it could be just a very painful nine months that a mother had to carry Jabez. Or it could be the time of his delivery that it was a very painful delivery for his mother. So growing up, I believe that Jabez was having a tough time because of the stigma of his name, that he is always a pain to many people. It could be a pain to his mother or it could be a pain you know, to his friends. But this is something that I would like to share, that whatever your friends may call you, the calling of your friends or the names that your friend that gave you doesn't define your future. Because I believe that it is God who defines our future. It is God who is our ultimate maker and our creator. He alone can define our future. You know, having said that, I believe that it wasn't a very good or a very pleasant upbringing for Jabez because probably his friends are laughing at him that a name that was given by his mother, you were truly a pain, you know, in the night for everybody in the society, in our community. So growing up with that nickname or that name given by his mother doesn't help Jabez. But I believe that through this story, whatever our friends may call us, whatever your mother may call you or your parents may call you, that doesn't define your future. And the person who defines our future is actually the next verse. That is God himself. And that brings me to my second point, a prayerful heart. A prayerful heart. And this is what the Bible tells us that, you know, the Jabez began to call upon the name of the God of Israel. That is in verse 10. Having been called by his mother, Jabez, that you are truly a pain in the neck, but in verse 10, Jabez actually, in one sense, changed the course of his life direction. In verse 10, the word of God tells us, and Jabez called on the God of Israel. Now, this is very important. We must catch that. Because in those days, in the land of Palestine or in the land of Canaan, there are so many gods in that community, in that land. Probably you have heard about the God of the Philistines, the God of the Amorites, the God of the Canaanites. And one of the most famous gods in those days was a god called Dagon, the God of the Philistines. And you can read that in the book of uh, 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 judges and also in the book of First Samuel chapter five, when the ark of the ark of the covenant was brought into the temple of Dagon, and there were two occasions, two nights. The first night, Dagon fell down; the whole idol came down, you know, and bowed to the presence of the ark of the covenant. They brought it back, you know, to this place, and the next day, the next night, you know. Somehow, you know, the, 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 the arms and the head of Dagon was broken. And we can see here, between the true, and the true and the living God and the God of the land. So here we learn something that Jabez called on the God of Israel. And I believe that, you know, during those days, personally, I believe that Jabez had been hearing, growing up, hearing about 
the many stories about the God of Israel being a living God, being a powerful God, being a creator God. And probably you have heard about the life of Abraham, the God of Abraham, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Probably you have heard about how God, you know, specifically called Abraham from Abram. God turned him to become Abraham, a father of many nations. And throughout this history, you know, I believe that Jabez heard also about the God of da- the God of David, how David single-handedly confronted Goliath and slain Goliath at one throw, at one slingshot. And I believe that Jabez heard so much about the God of Israel that he eventually come to a realization that only God can change his life about his past, about the stigma of his name, that he will call upon the name of God. Say, God, I will call on you. You are going to change my life. You are the creator God. You are the God of Israel. And this is how Jabez prayed. In verse 10, he says, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. The first thing that Jabez was to cry out to God. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 3 tells us, When we call on the name of the Lord, He will surely show us great and mighty things. So this scripture actually encourages all of us here to call on God personally and also collectively. The first thing that Jabez prayed was to God, you will surely bless me indeed. Now this is something very important that we actually need to pray that God shall bless us. This is a way that we need to pray. God bless me indeed. If you, un- if you understand the nature of God, let me tell you something about the nature of God. The nature of God, He is actually a God of blessing. Right on the onset of the creation week, After God has created the sea creatures and the wind creatures, God says, I will bless thee indeed, be fruitful and multiply. But on the sixth day, after he has created mankind after his image, and the Lord bless mankind, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply and subdue the earth, and have dominion over all the creations of the earth. So we can see, when God has created the entire earth, and everything that is in it, the Lord will bless it. Of course, there is one caution that I need to throw out to all of us here. We must always, after going after the blesser, Not the blessing, but in coming to know God and coming to walk with God, then you will actually realize that God, you know, is more than delighted and happy to bless us, to bless his creation. I believe that it is necessary for us to pray this prayer. God bless me indeed. Secondly, he prayed. God, you will enlarge my territory. Lord, you will enlarge my territory. Simply means, God, enlarge my borders. The word enlarge simply means to increase, to grow my borders, to enlarge my influence. In the book of Judges, you would understand you know, that many times 
that the enemies, the Philistines or the Moabites will come and conquer the land of the conquer the land that belongs to the Israelites. And many a times they will cry out to the Lord, and God will raise up judges to deliver them out of the hand of the enemies. And I believe this time in the in the life of Jab- in the life of Jabez, he was actually praying God. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge my place of influence. Or even enlarge my possession. My land. My property. What has been taken away from the, by the enemy. Lord, restore it back to me. Enlarge my sphere, sphere of influence. That whatever I do. I will cause an inference to others to be a blessing to others. This is how we ought to pray constantly. Lord, enlarge my vision. Lord, enlarge, you know, my influence. Lord, enlarge whatever that I am doing. Increase my capacity as a person. Whatever I am doing in the office, in the church, in my personal walk with you, increase my revelation about you. Increase my knowledge about you. Increase my love for you. Increase my understanding about the Holy Spirit. Enlarge, help me to understand the power, the anointing of the word. Just as the psalmist says, Lord, open my eyes that I may understand your word. Hallelujah. We need to pray prayers like this. One of the great missionary I ran many, many years ago is a missionary called William Carey. He was an outstanding missionary to India. And this is what he wrote. He says, we must expect Great things from God and attempt great things for God. Lord, enlarge my territory. Lord, enlarge my borders. And thirdly, he prayed, God, that you would, that your hand will be with me. There's a third thing he prayed, that your hand would be with me. You know, hand speaks about or signifies a time of fellowship and a time of presence. It is the right hand of fellowship. The Word of God tells us it is my right hand of righteousness. In the book of Psalms, chapter 18 and verse 35, it is your right hand that has helped me up. Psalms 18, spoken and written by King David. The many trials and difficulties and testings and the fight against the enemy. He acknowledges that it was the hand of the Lord that held him up. It was the hand of the Lord that made him steady. It was the hand of the Lord that constantly provided him with the communion and the fellowship. It was the hand of the Lord that kept him strong. It was the hand of the Lord that protected him in times of danger. It was the hand of the Lord that keep him safe and sound all the days of his life. See, the hand of the Lord is so powerful. It is so powerful. It is the hand that is able to say, I am here. It is the hand of the Lord that says, I am right beside you. It is the hand of the Lord that says, I am here for you always. You know, I remember... Years ago, when I was still in Malaysia, I have climbed a mountain called Mount Kinabalu. 
it is considered the highest mountain in Southeast Asia. The height is about 14,000 feet above sea level. It requires two days. You break a day, and then the next day you finally reach the summit. I have climbed the mountain five times. Um, I believe that it was the last time I brought my son, two sons, um, to climb that mountain. Hans was my oldest son. He was probably 11 years old. My second one was nine years old. And the third one was six years old. Now, the first boy went up to the summit with me, to the peak with me. The two others, they climbed halfway the mountain. You know, the first sec section of the mountain, it is quite an easy climb. You just need some stamina and energy and tenacity just to walk up the hill. The second part of the climb is actually quite dangerous. And this is when we climb up, we start our journey from 11,000 feet, we start early in the morning, at 3 a.m. in the morning, to climb up another 3,000 feet on rocky mountains. And this is the most dangerous part of the climb. So my son, my oldest son, was with me. And I constantly remind him, you have to keep close with me. And certain point, you know, it is actually a very dangerous cliff. If you miss time or if you miss a, a stem and you have not hung to somebody, you can actually drop down and die. So I still remember, you know, believing that we were able to reach the summit. So I told my son, you have to stay close with me. It's a very dangerous climb. So we went through the climb from, nine, from 3 p.m., 3 a.m., 3 a.m., and then finally we reached the summit to the very peak at 7 or 8 a.m. But throughout the climb, it was dark. We have a torchlight. We have headlights. But my son was holding on to me most of the time. Because I told him so. You cannot let go because it is dangerous. So he kept close with me and I brought him up to a safe place. Now this is how Jabez would say, Lord, your hand would be upon me to hold me, to keep me, and to protect me. Now not Long after my incident, that incident, we have climbed up successfully with my son with no incident. Then another pastor came to visit me. And he was also relating the same story. He also brought his son up to climb the mountain. His son was probably about the same age like my son. And he was relating to me how dangerous it was. He almost lost his son. At one particular climb, his son missed a stem and he actually fell. And the father, in the nick of time, was able to grab him by his hand and lift him, lifted him up to safety. Wow. When he shared the incident, it was very scary because he almost lost his son. The fourth thing that Jabez prayed was, Lord, keep me from evil. Keep me from evil. I think it is legit for us to pray this prayer. Lord, keep me from evil. Keep me from my evil enemies. The word evil is translated keep me from my enemies. There are so many enemies that surround us. 
just as Psalms 23 and verse 4 tells us, in the presence of my enemies, you prepare a table before me. Growing up in this world, we all know there are so many so-called evils or enemies that are surrounding us. So many what we call bad influences or so many things that may, you know, trap us and lead us and help us or probably lead us and tempt us to fall into temptation and eventually our life may be destroyed. And Jabez prayed, Lord, keep me from evil. The word evil also means, Lord, keep me from diseases and sicknesses. And this is one true fact in life. We hear about so many people, they are healthy, they are strong. And yes, so many people are succumbed to succumb diseases and sicknesses. But it is important for us to pray this prayer. Lord, keep me from sickness and diseases. And this is what the Lord had actually prepared or promised the people when they came out from the land of bondage. If you walk in my commandments, if you obey my commandments, if you love me, then I will keep all these diseases that was inflicted upon your body in the land of Egypt, they will not come near you. And I believe that Jabez knew all these promises and he prayed to the Lord, Lord, keep me from all this evil. And the evil also can be interpreted as the wild beasts of the land. Yes, the wild beasts, they are dangerous. They are fierce. They may tear you apart. And this is how we read in the scriptures when the brothers, you know, after they sold Joseph into slavery, they finally concorded with you know, a plan or a lie and brought, you know, the garments of Joseph back to Jacob. And Jacob said, Alas, my son, he was eaten up or devoured by a wild beast. Many a times you can read in the scriptures, wild beasts, their presence in the land and they could be a trouble to many people if they are not protected. But Jabez pray, Lord, keep me from evil. And lastly, Jacob also prayed this prayer. He says that, Lord, that I may not cause pain. I don't want to be a pain no more. No more. People may call me by my nickname. My mom may call me Jabez, that I'm causing pain to many people. But this prayer, this stigma has to stop today and right now. I will not cause pain to anybody. 20 years ago when I arrived to Vancouver, the first thing I have learned, or the first phrase that I have learned in Vancouver was this, hurting people go around Hurting people. Well, I say that's true. Hurting people go around hurting people. And that's the reason I believe that it was the prayer of Jabez. I don't want to move around or go around hurting people no more. This thing has to be stopped right now. And I don't want to be a pain in your night no more. Rather today, instead of being a pain in the night, I want to be a blessing. I want to be a blessing, especially immediately to the closest person that I have. A blessing to your spouse. A blessing to your children. A blessing to the members of the church. A blessing to our own community. A blessing to our colleagues. I will not give any more trouble to my friends, rather, wherever I go, I will be a blessing. This is how Jabez prayed. Say, God, you got to change my life completely. 
You have to protect me. You got to bless me. You got to keep me from evil. You got to turn my curse into a blessing. And finally, that is my third point. It was a promising ending. How do we know that? Because the word of the Lord tells us, and God granted what he requested. I like this phrase. In other words, that God answered his prayers. God said, yes, I see your heart. I know what you are praying for. I know your determination. I know the cry of your heart that you no longer want to live under this spell of being a pain to other people. But today, I am going to answer your prayer. I am going to bless you indeed. I am going to enlarge your territory. I am going to be with you. My hand of righteousness and power and healing is going to be constantly by your side. And I will cause no more pain in your life. Rather, I will make you a blessing wherever you go. But when you turn back to verse 9, and this is what the Bible tells us, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And I believe that the secret of this scripture is because he learned to call upon the God of Israel. He learned to call upon the God, the true and the living God. I want to challenge you today to challenge the entire church to whoever is listening today. God defines our future. Not your parents. Your parents may shape you in a certain way. But I believe that it is God. God alone defines our future. Because he is the potter. We are the clay. But when we learn to submit ourselves. And turn ourselves into God. And say God. You got to do something in my life. I believe that God will hear your prayer. When you say, God, make me a blessing, that will be one of the sweetest prayers that God would ever hear from his children. Lord, make me a blessing. I have prayed that prayer many, many times since I became a Christian. Lord, make me a blessing. Wherever I go, I want to be a blessing to people. I want to be a blessing to my family members, my brothers and my sisters. I don't want to be a burden to them, but I want to be a blessing to them whatever way is possible, emotionally or financially, or maybe they have an issue or problems or something they need to talk about. I'm always there for them. I want to be a blessing. So this morning, as we conclude, I want to pray with you before we partake of the communion. Hallelujah. I want to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for the spoken word and the written word from the Bible. I thank you because the word is active and it is alive. It is there to change us, to motivate us, to bless us, to, re to release us, and to turn us to be a man after your own heart. And Lord, you are always there to hear our prayer. And this morning, Lord, our prayer is, Lord, make me a blessing that I will not cause pain no more. I do want to be a burden to anybody, but rather, I will rather be a blessing. Therefore, bless us indeed. In Jesus' name, I believe that today, 
God hears your prayer and it is doing something deep within your spirit. Something so powerful in your heart right now. When you utter this prayer in faith, when you call upon the God of Israel, when you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you call upon that powerful name, the name Jesus Christ, the Lord will hear you. Something is happening. We praise you. We bless you. We give thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. And this today is the first Sunday of the month. We are having communion. And this is how Jesus demonstrated his love for us. He gave himself up for the church. His love is sacrificial and unconditional. It simply means that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. And as we partake of this communion, appropriating the promises of God, Believing this emblem representing the broken body of Jesus Christ and the shed blood of the Lord. It is alone by itself is so powerful. The broken body brings restoration and healing. The shedding of his blood speaks about the remissions and the forgiveness of our sins. When we partake of this communion with faith, with understanding, I believe there are miracles that will take place as we partake this communion in faith. That whatever condition we may be facing today. It could be an issue. It could be a sickness. I want you to say, God, I want to live free from this pain. Just as Jabez in one sense prayed, Lord, I want to be free from this pain. And there is provision today. And that provision is through his broken body and his shed blood. So as we partake of this communion, let's do it with faith. With a heart of thanksgiving, thanking God for his salvation and appropriating his power, his healing, his forgiveness over our body. Let us partake of the bread together. Let us also drink of the cup together. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless all of you here. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you.